hello everyone welcome or welcome back again to my youtube channel my name is osa reme and if today is your first time ever seeing any of my videos thank you so much for being here on this channel i share sewing tutorials and i share pattern drafting videos as well so if all of that is what you're interested in you definitely want to hit on the subscribe button in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you guys how to make this beautiful dress right here as seen on vicky james i'm going to be showing you guys how to go about the pattern drafting for something like this and how to go about the sewing so if this is something you're interested in you definitely want to keep on watching the video if you're still yet to subscribe hit on the subscribe button so that you're the first to know when i upload um, my next videos so with that being said let us get started with this video to make this dress you will need at least three yards of fabric i'm making use of three and a half yard here and the type of fabric i'm using is called mikado silk um like I said before, I'm using three and a half yards. You will need a lot of fabric because it's a full flare and you're actually going to make gathers on it as well. I also went ahead to get a matching lining. You don't need to get a lot of lining. If you can get one yard of lining, it should be enough. So that's what we're going to be using to make this dress. I'm going to go ahead now and start by drafting out the pattern. I have my pattern paper folded into two. So I'm going to start by drawing out a starting line at the top. And then from this starting line, I'm going to measure down to my bust point. So I'll mark it here. And I'm going to draw a straight line across this point as well. Next, I'll measure from my shoulder to my under bust. So I'll place my tape here at the shoulder line and measure down to my under bust. I'll mark it here. And I'm going to also take a measurement from my shoulder down to my waist, which is at 15 and a half here. So I'm going to draw straight lines across these two points as well. So basically, you have the shoulder line, the bust line, the under bust line, and the waistline. You will need to take all these measurements on your body. I have gone ahead to label all the lines. So now on the shoulder line, I'm going to go in by 3 inches for my neck width. And then I'm going to come down by 3 inches for the neck depth. Although we're not going to be using this neckline, but we're trying to draft out a basic body pattern. So we need to draw out a neckline. So I'll connect the two points together now that I just created to give me a round neckline. Once you're true with that, you're going to measure from the center again towards the side on the shoulder line. Go in by half of your shoulder measurement. For me, it was 7 inches. I marked it and from that point, I came down by 1 inch for my shoulder slope. So I'm going to connect from the neckline to that shoulder slope measurement I had. Once you're true with that, from the shoulder slope, you're going to measure down to your armhole depth. For me, my armhole depth is 7 inches. I marked it here. And I'm going to also draw a straight line across this point and label this new line the chest line. Next, I'm going to connect a straight line from the shoulder slope to meet the chest line, just like I've done here. Once you're through with that, the next thing you want to do is to get the midpoint between the shoulder slope and the chest line. So I marked the midpoint here, which is like the middle. And from that middle point, go in by half of an inch. Once you're true with that, on the chest line, go ahead and divide your bust measurement by 4 and make a mark here. Now you're going to join all the points together that you have to give you your armhole curve. So I'm going to connect all these points together with my French curve, just like you see me doing like this. After joining out your armhole, you're going to create the dart. So on the bust line, go in by half of your nipple to nipple measurement. For me, it's 3 and a half. I marked it here on the bust line. And also marked it here on the waistline. So I'm going to use my straight ruler to connect both points to give me a straight line. I just labeled my patterns again just so we don't make a mistake later. Okay. So once that is done, the next thing I want to do now is on the shoulder here, I'm going to divide what I have on my shoulder into two equal halves. And I'm going to connect from the point I got there to the bust point. So just from here down to the shoulder here. So just do exactly what I've done in this video. Once you're true with that, on the under bust line, we are going to start taking in our dart. So make sure you are taking your dart from the under bust line. So on the part going towards the center of your blouse, you should mark half an inch. If you're very busty, you can mark one inch here or you can do three quarter of an inch. So I used half an inch here on both sides. 
Now on this other side, going towards the side of the corset, the side of the line we draw out, I marked one inch on both sides. If you're busty, if you're on the bigger side, you can use one and a half inch on both sides for this place. So I connected the two parts together, the two points together, just like you see. Note that all the lines stopped at the underboss line. Now from the underboss here, I am going to curve the two points to meet the boss line, just like you see me doing like this. So once you're through with that, the next thing we want to do is to create the neckline for this blouse. Remember that this is the chest line. If we decide to maintain the chest line, this blouse might be too revealing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up from the chest line here by about one inch. And from this one inch point, I'm going to create my sweetheart neckline. So I've placed my French curve, you can see. So I'm just going to arrange it in place and I'm going to draw to meet this line here. Okay. And from here, I'm going to just connect a curve into the armhole. So just look at what I'm doing right here. If you do not have a French curve, you can use your free hand. I'm going to extend into the armhole later, okay? So now the next thing I want to do is on this line here, I'm going to go out on both sides by half of an inch. So once you've done that, go ahead and connect it to meet the bust line, just like I'm doing here. So just like a curve to connect to meet the bust line on both sides. So once you're through with this, you are done drafting out the bustier area of this um, dress. So I'm just going to now connect from this curve here into the armhole, like you see me doing like this. And now I'm just going to go ahead and mark the areas that I'm going to be cutting out. So these areas here and here are going to be cut out. So we have to replace this dart. So here on the bust line, I just replaced the little dart that I have here that was just about half an inch. And then I added extra one and a half inch for stitching allowance. Now on the waistline, you're going to divide your waist measurement by four. And then you're going to measure this dart that we have here and replace it back. After replacing the dart, you're going to add an extra one and a half inch for stitching allowance. Next, I'm going to now join the both points together on the side. So from the waist to the chest line here. And then I'll just extend this line into the side. So we've added stitching allowance to the side of this pattern. We're not going to be adding any stitching allowance again. So yeah, that's all for the drafting out of the upper part of these bodies. I'm going to go ahead now and cut this out. Make sure you're looking at the areas I'm cutting out and see how I'm cutting it out exactly so that you do the same thing exactly. So guys, when you're cutting this out, um, make sure that you have some space below the waistline. Remember that this is the waistline, so I have some space below it because I want to be able to create that curve that we have in front. So now for us to be able to create the curve, first of all, you have to place your pattern papers together like this from the under bust. And you're just going to tape it down from the under bust, just like this, just from the under bust. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut it off like this. You should have the upper part looking like this when you tape down the bottom. So basically your taping should start from the under bust line here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do to get the curve around the waist part of this dress Come down from the under bust line by half an inch on the side. And on the center, from the waistline, come down by about one and a half inch or even two inches. The more inches you come down by from the waist, the more you are going to have that curl shape on the waist area. So for the one I came down by on the under bust line on the side, I'm going to connect this one inch here into the under bust, just like I've done here. So connect it into the under bust like I've done. And then just extend the underbust line on the center like this. Now for the one and a half inch under the waistline, I'm going to just um, place my curve, my curve rule like this from the point and measure to meet the waist like this. So you should have your um, underbust looking like this. That's like the waist area. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. Now from your waist, if the pattern paper you use, you do not have enough space from your waistline all you have to do is to join some pattern paper to some paper to your pattern so that you'll be able to get that curve below the waistline so once you're done cutting it out you should have your pattern pieces looking like this so you have the bustier at the top and then you have the bottom waist part here now for the back pattern you just need to draft out a basic back pattern 
For this button that I've drafted out here, I have already gone ahead to add my stitching allowance. So basically all I have to do is from the armhole, where the armhole stopped, I'm just going to get the neckline for the back. So from the armhole here, which is the chest line, I'm just going to use my marker to draw a straight line across. Okay, so that's where the back neckline will start from. And then after this, from the center here on the waist, the zipper allowance area, I'm coming in by half an inch. And I'm going to connect from this half an inch I came in by to the top of the neckline here. Now, this is going to prevent my zipper from bulging at the back when we are done making this dress. Next, at the top of your dart, you are going to go out on both sides by quarter of an inch and just connect it to meet the dart's legs, just like you see me doing like this. So this dart here is going to be cut off, so I'll just go ahead and mark it. Now, I will just make my zipper allowance line more visible and I'm going to go ahead and cut out this back pattern. So, look at the areas I'm cutting out so you know exactly what to do as well. So, once you're through cutting it out, what I'm going to do is to just fold in this dart area. I want to take it off on the pattern paper so that we don't have to be sewing our dart on the fabric. So, once you've taken it off on the pattern paper, you don't need to sew it on the, on the fabric again. So, I just pin down the dart area for the back and then we have our front patterns so i'm going to mark a, an arrow towards the upper part to show me the upper part of the waist part because it's actually quite um, difficult to tell because both sides are curved so after that i went ahead to fold a piece of my fabric into two and i placed my pattern papers on it you can notice how i placed the center front piece on the folded edge and the waist area on the folded edge you must make sure that you have your waist on the folded edge and then the center front on the folded edge edge once you have that every other part can be placed anywhere even the back so i'm going ahead to cut out the front pieces now as you can see the upper bustier area and the other side i added half an inch of stitching allowance all the way around so these are the upper part and then the waist part and i did the exact same thing for the back pattern as well so i'm going to go ahead and also cut out all these pieces on my lining now for the upper part which is the bustier area i'm going to go ahead and cut out wording to pad the um upper part area so i'm just going to use my wording i'll fold it into two like this and i'm just going to cut it out exactly like what i have on the um, actual fabric here so just trace it out basically and i'll do the same thing for this other side as well so now once you're done cutting out all the pieces you're going to bring back um, the bustier part which is the upper part i'm going to go ahead and remove all the pins and separate the pattern paper from the fabric so this is the center front piece i'm going to open it up like this and i'm going to be placing the wording on it from the wrong side just like it's imaging like this i have removed the lining part i'm going to be stitching the lining separately and then i'll take the lining away from this other side as well and i will arrange them as they're supposed to be so i'll place the wording underneath on the wrong side like this and i'll do the same thing on the other side as well so arrange the wording under like this so once you're done arranging all the pieces just go ahead and pin down the center piece a bit so that at least the wording doesn't move away and then you're going to place the side piece with the center piece like i've done here right sides facing each other and then go ahead and pin it from the top to the bottom so once you're done pinning down this side you're going to do the exact same thing for this other part as well i'm not going to pin this down i'm just going to go ahead and stitch down the areas i've pinned so i'm done stitching it down and this is what i had i ironed all my seams open and i've gone ahead to also stitch down the lining piece as well and iron the seams open so this is what i have so before we join the lining and the actual fabric together you have to make your straps so for the straps i folded a piece of my fabric into two to give me like a strap and the length of my strap is 13 inches long so i'm going to place this on the area where i had my fold here and pin it down where i joined the bustier area rather and i'm going to place this one here as well and pin it down so just pin it about two inches away from where you're going to be stitching so once you're through with this you're not going to go ahead and cover it up with your lining and then go ahead and pin all the way across the top so now i'm going to go ahead and just stitch all the way around the neckline here and then i'll stitch this side as well 
so after i was done making my stitch this is what i have so we're going to be placing that ruffle piece on the front so you have to measure your waist here on the upper part what i had was 16 inches so i have this piece of fabric here and i'm going to measure the height from here it was around seven inches so that's going to be about the height i'll be using for the ruffle piece so you're going to measure the fabric is folded into two so you measure about seven inches i would mark it here and then for the length of the ruffle remember that i had about 16 inches here so we have to add more inches to be able to have that gather effect so i decided to mark mine at about 24 inches the more inches you use here the more gathered it's going to be right so i went ahead to just cut it out here at 24 so that means i've added about eight extra inches to what i had on my waist so i'm going to go ahead and reduce the height of this ruffle so that it will fit into the area we're going to be pleating it in so what i did was to just fold this fabric into two again i'm going to measure what i have here which is about six and a half but i'll be measuring seven on this side of the um, fold that i have and i'm going to go ahead and cut it out so while i was cutting this out um i thought to give it a curve but you do not need to do that because i ended up removing the curve later because it didn't look nice so just cut it out straight straight do not curve it do not give it any curve so once you're done cutting it out you're just going to fold this area and this area and like i said i removed the curve so this is what i now had after i was done stitching it down so it's in a fold and then i folded it down the sides and then just made a stitch to join these other parts together here so you do not need to make it curved at this point so take note of that so once you're through with that you're just going to place this piece of fabric on top of the bustier area like i've done here and i'm just going to go ahead and pleat it from one end to the other before you start pleating you can give a little bit of space about one inch away or two inches away before you start making your pleats so this is what i had after i was done making my pleats i just used my pin to just hold the pleats in place at some point so that it stays perfectly so now we are going to be placing the waist area i'm going to go ahead and remove the pattern paper i have cut out the waist as well with the lining so you are going to be placing the upper part in between the lining and the actual fabric so the lining is going to be at the bottom and then the actual fabric the upper part is going to be in between and then you're going to cover it up with the actual fabric so it's going to be like you're sandwiching the upper part into the the waist area so i'm just going to go ahead and pin this down in place so when you're pinning this down make sure you're picking the lining underneath as well so just like the upper part should be in the middle of the both pieces so once i was done this is what i had so i'm going to go ahead and stitch this down on the sewing machine and stitch down the side as well so after i was done this is what it looked like you can see the areas that i stitched down okay so this is how neat it looks so now the next thing we want to do is to join this with the back so i'm going to bring the back pieces in i'm going to go ahead and remove the pattern paper so that we can join the front and the back together remember we have folded away our dart so we are not going to be stitching the dart for the back so just go ahead and place them together right sides make sure that the right sides are facing you and then you are going to measure the front to know where you are going to place your strap so from this side from where the strap started on the front to the side i measured and i had six inches so from the side of the back piece here i'll mark six and a half inch because the half inch is for us to stitch with the lining and i'll do the same thing here six and a half inch okay so now you're going to turn the front piece wrong side to face you make sure the wrong side of the front piece is facing you and then go ahead and pin the strap exactly on the areas that you have um marked earlier so just like i'm doing here just pin it like this and now you're going to cover the both back pieces with your lining so you're going to cover it up with your lining like this and you're going to head over to the sewing machine and just make a stitch to stitch all these areas down and do the same thing on this other side when you're done turn it over to the right side and iron it out so after i was done with that this is what i had so now i'm going to join the front and the back pieces together so just place them right sides facing each other and you're going to go ahead and pin down the sides so you're going to head over to the sewing machine and stitch down the sides that you have pinned down when you're stitching down the side you will need to make use of your body measurement so for the bustier area you use your bust measurement and for the waist you have to measure your waist oh my.
So now this is what I had after I was done stitching the front and the back pieces together. So now let's go ahead and cut out the flare for the bottom part. So for the flare of the bottom part, first you are going to fold the fabric that you have left into two equal halves. So I have folded this fabric into two. As you can see, you can see the borders to borders here. So fold all the fabric you have into two. And once you are through with that, the next thing you want to do is from this edge here where you have this fold here, you are going to pick it like this and then fold it again. So you are going to fold it again like this and that time, this way you have folded your fabric into four. When you count it, you will notice it's actually four. So once you're done arranging the fabric like this, it should look like what you see me having here. So just go ahead and pin down the edges just like I'm doing here so that it will be easy for you to work with so that it doesn't um, move away from what you want it to be. So now we are going to measure out the waist around here. And what I'm going to do is when you are measuring out this waist, because we are going to make gathers even on the flare, my natural waist measurement is 26 inches. I am going to be cutting out using about 44 inches to measure out as my waist for the cutting out of this flare. That's because we are going to be making gathers. So if you are going to make gathers, it means that you have to have way more than your actual waist measurement. So for my waist here for this dress, I'm using 44 inches. So that 44 inches, I've gone ahead to divide it into four, and that is 11. So I just measured 11 randomly. So wherever gave me 11, I marked it. So from the top of my fabric, I'm going to measure from what I had from the top of my fabric to where that 11 inches point was. And what I had was about 14 inches. So now I'm using that 14 inches from the top to create a curve so that it's not looking like a straight line. So once you're through with that, from the first curve that you've created, which is the waistline, you're going to measure the length that you want the flare part of your dress to be. Now, for the flare part of my dress, I want it to be about 30 inches, right? Because the upper part of the dress is already 16 inches. So 16 plus 30 is going to give me 46, which is the full length that this dress is going to be. So basically, I'm placing my tape on the waist that we measured out just now that first line that i drew out so i am placing my tape there and i'm measuring down to 30 inches i actually hope that you guys understand what i'm talking about so place your tape on the waist not at the top this time around it must be from the waist so from the waist i went ahead to measure i'm marking the 30 inches all the way across so that's going to give you the curve you can see what i have here so you can see it so i measured from the waist so now I'm going to go ahead and cut this out about half inch away from where my line was on the waist. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut out the other line as well here. So that's going to give me the full length that I have for the flare part of this dress. So once you're done cutting it out, go ahead and remove the pins and open it up okay so you should you can see how it's looking already you can see my full flare here so the waist is too big how to fix that is i'm going to make a gather stitch all the way across the waist and make gathers so after i was done making the gathers this is what i had so i'm just going to now place the skirt part on the waist area of my actual fabric so i'm placing it together right sides facing each other with the upper part sorry so once you're done making the gathers, the waist on the bottom part is now the same as the waist you have on the upper part. Go ahead and place them together by pinning it in place. And I'm going to go ahead and stitch this area I've pinned down. So guys, after I was done stitching it down, I went ahead to like search the areas as well. This is what I had. So now the last thing we're going to do is to finish up the center back. And to finish up the center back, I'm just going to place the two back pieces together, right sides facing each other like this. And I'm going to pin from the top down to the bottom of the back. So guys, once you're done pinning it down, I'm going to be placing my zipper at the upper part. So I'll stop my zipper somewhere around here. And then from here, I'm just going to make a straight stitch. And after that, I'll just fold the rough edges at the end. And that's basically all for the making of this dress. So I folded the end. I fixed my zipper and then finish up the back and this is what I had. So now to finish up this area here, if you wear this dress, it's not going to stay in place. I, I tried it on 
and the ruffle pieces were not standing so what i went ahead to do was to just pin down this area here and i'm going to use my needle and thread to just like stitch the ruffle to the bustier part so just like a very small stitch so you stitch the ruffle to the bustier part to make it stay in place and that will basically be all for the making of this dress so after i was done with everything you can see what it looks like on me that's all for the making of this dress i actually hope that you guys find this tutorial helpful um if you do please leave me a comment in the comment section and i'll see you guys in my next video